All right, you guys, uh, this is a Q&A about my top surgery for this page, um, and I have to do my spiel. Uh, my name is MJ. I'm a trans man. I've had top surgery. I chose to leave that because I'm fat. Um, I felt like it looked more natural. So the number one question I get asked is, well, what if you lose weight? Um, well, is my fucking duck escaped? Oh, my God. Thank God. False alarm. Okay. <laughs> all right so the number one question i get asked is like what if i lost weight well if i lost weight i have lost weight um you know post-op and my chest went down but um i would actually hope in my case that uh if i did lose weight um i don't want like a completely flat chest like it would i know from experience it would reduce some um but i actually wouldn't want a completely flat chest because even when i um you know am smaller i still have like a gut and loose skin even when i was at my lowest weight even i mean i've always had loose skin so i still feel like it would it would be natural to have kind of like something there um, but you know, I can't predict that. I can't predict like I know exactly where I'm gonna lose weight and what it's gonna look like. Um, but for me personally, um, I am not worried about not having a flat chest if I ever lost weight because with my body composition, I still think I would look really natural with it and I think it's fine. Um, all right, what else? Another question, um, pain level. So when I had top surgery, um, I'm trying to remember, I don't remember all of it. <laughs> um, so the pain, um, it wasn't like in my opinion uh, i had a hernia repaired shortly after and that was like way worse in my opinion shit hold on hold on hold on okay okay so um i had a hernia surgery shortly after um and i thought that was much worse um the worst part was not being able to sleep on my side or stomach uh because i was not a back sleeper now i am since then um let's see what other questions do i get asked hold on Sometimes I get um, questions from um, women who are angry that they can't go shirtless and they take it out on me. Like, why should you be able to? Um, you're taking it out on the wrong person. Um, I think you should be able to. And, um, like, I, I mean, it is it is legal where I live. So um, take it up with the authorities if it's not legal where you live. Um, but trans men do not care if you, you know, go shirtless. Um, but that is transphobic because you're comparing us to women instead of men the reality is is fat men my size have chests like this so another question i get asked a lot is um do you have um you know feeling in your chest uh, some places i do some places i don't um but would i do it all over again absolutely <laughs> People always ask if I had to lose weight to get approved for top surgery. No, I went to two consultations, neither one even mentioned my weight. Um, so, no, I did not have Hi, thank you for your question. Um, I have to do my spiel before I start. Uh, my name is MJ. I've had top surgery. I decided to leave a little fat because I am just a little fat, you know what I mean? So, okay, not towards you, but literally it's a, it's a huge fucking thing on here. Um, when it comes to top surgery, um, I actually didn't have to pay anything, and that's not because it was all covered by insurance. Um, so basically, 80% um, was covered by insurance. However, um, I had to prove extensively um, that I was eligible for top surgery before it even, it even was, you know, deemed... Um, as billable to the insurance like at before it was like deemed that they would even cover it covered whatever <laughs> to get approved for top surgery i literally needed um a letter from um the therapist's office that i've been going to since i was like literally five years old um stating that i had gender dysphoria that i was being treated for it i also had to get a referral letter from my um main like primary care doctor i had to get a clearance letter from my primary care i had to get a um a uh, letter from my hormone provider I uh, yeah. so it was a lot it was a lot uh, but yes yeah, so they covered 80% and I was still gonna have to owe quite a bit of money um, because top surgery I don't remember the exact cost of mine but it is upward it can be anywhere from what I see it averages on the um, lower side like six grand which that's pretty low um, to like 10 grand um, and so I still was gonna owe a significant amount of money however the hospital just wrote it off um, and it's amazing um, I don't know if there's like angels working at that hospital I don't know man they are amazing there when my father had cancer like he had a major surgery there we didn't think he would be able to um, you know pay his bill so um, the community actually held a benefit for my dad so he could get like um, you know the funds to pay his bills after he was recovering from surgery and everything 
they wrote it off. They wrote his off too. I don't know. Pretty sweet deal. Hi, thank you for your question. Um, and as you know, I have to say my spiel. My name is MJ. I am a trans man. I have had top surgery. I chose to leave fat because I am fat. Um, actually, no, a lot of people think that I just got a reduction, but that's not true at all. Um, I still got DI with grafts, which is double incision with grafts. I can't. I have to leave a part out there because this will get taken down. Um, however, yeah, so um, I got the same type of top surgery that you see in most trans men. Um, it's just that I asked to leave some fat. Um, so it's like it's the same thing um it's not just a reduction um with a reduction um they don't typically from it's not like they just like reduce the size of my chest they also did like masculinization with liposuction on the sides um some areas got reduced once again i can't say it on here um but they got reshapen reduced and shown back on um so there was a lot more to it um it definitely wasn't just a reduction um so i got a di with grafts and i just chose to leave fat um so yeah hope that helps and i hope you have a good day <laughs> Thank you for your question. I have to do my spiel for anyone who's new here. My name is MJ. I've had top surgery. I'm a trans man. It's just that I'm fat, so I decided to leave fat. Okay, uh, so thank you for your question. So I'm covered in pretty uh, shitty tattoos. Most of them I did uh, myself with a tattoo gun. Uh, zero out of ten, I don't recommend. Um, do I regret it? Hell no. I love all my tattoos. Um, I love how they look, even if they don't look professional. Um, I'm also covered in a lot of professional tattoos, too, though. Uh, my chest is professional. Um, this is professional professional this is professional um i have a professional one on my leg um i have let's see that's professional the stars not anything else <laughs> um so i do have a lot of professional ones too um to gauge like just like i mean I've, i it's pretty like i said i do not recommend this i do not recommend this but like i did my throat tattoo myself um so i feel like i have a pretty like good uh idea of well at least for me anyways uh which is the most painful because i've tattooed pretty much everywhere um the worst for me was the ribs and i've had this uh since before i transitioned i got this uh when i was about 19 or 20 years old so like literally like 11 years ago um this little dinky thing right it was the most painful one i've ever ever gotten done whether it be by me or somebody else my ribs um i remember like being shocked by the level of pain because i saw so many women who um were like at the time i was pretty thin but they were even way thinner than me and they had like huge pieces and um i would be like oh that's gonna be like nothing it ain't gonna hurt oh my god i don't know how they did it i don't know how they did it i was like begging the guy like is this almost done like please let this be done soon like it was horrible um and it's so funny because like i mean you would think like tattooing my own throat would be a lot worse than getting measly little flowers right there especially because even back then i still had a gut i still had fat uh, but that was oh my god it was so bad i do not know when you see a woman and i know like pain tolerance is different like i know it affects everybody differently but generally speaking the ribs are known to be pretty bad so when you see a woman and she has and she has no tattoos except for this huge piece right here just know she's a badass she's a badass because sitting through this little dinky fucking it looks like a cigar that's about the length of a cigar a big fat cigar right that was horrible <laughs> that was horrible thank you for your question hi thank you um and just i have to do my disclaimer um if you're new here my name is mj i am a trans man um i've had top surgery i chose to leave fat because i am fat okay so uh i chose it because it looked more natural and thank you for saying so to me it looks more natural i should say um and i'm not shaming anybody's choices whatever everybody has their own preferences blah 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 um actually yeah i do have t i documented every single portion of my top surgery i documented it like in a very detailed manner pictures of everything um unfortunately tiktok will not even allow me to share censored videos um of my top surgery journey it won't even like even stuff that's not gory that's not inappropriate i'm not allowed to share um it's really frustrating because i literally have so much educational content um that i could share um if they'd let me um but not allowed i guess 
Um, but anyways, yeah, my chest, I, I don't even know how much I can say about what my chest looked like before this, but, um, you know, like, when some trans men, like, can't grasp the idea that, like, I wanted fat in my chest, like, I kind of get it, because if they had smaller chests before, then leaving even this to them would probably be, like, still having, like, you know, uh, I can't even say the word, it begins with a B and it rhymes with dudes, okay, <laughs> like, but, um, you know, for me, like, this is nothing, are you kidding me, like, it's like a regular guy chat, like, this is nothing compared to what I was dealing with beforehand, um, but thank you so much, I appreciate your comment, and I really wish that I could, um, you know, share a lot more than I am able to, um, unfortunately I can't, because, um, TikTok thinks that, uh, people are gonna be scarred for life if they realize that trans people actually exist, but thank you so much for your comment, thank you. <laughs> Hi, yes, okay, uh, so to everyone who's new, hi, my name is MJ, um, I've had top surgery, I'm a trans male, I decided to leave fat because I'm fat, okay, so, uh, yes, no, this actually is a, uh, plus in my opinion, um, once again, I have to constantly reiterate that whatever somebody chooses to do with their body is their own business, um, I wanted this because I felt like it looked more natural to me, um, but I do love that, um, you can't, like, you can see my scars, like, if you know, like, you, you guys know that I top surgery so you can see them but most people just think it's like the curve of like my uh man uh it rhymes with uh tubes okay um <laughs> i gotta be careful what you say on here okay um but i do like that like you know if i ever did want to show off my scars like literally when i'm laying down when i lay down at night they show every you know so like i do like that i like that when i go in public and I'm not, like, whatever, if somebody, a lot of people embrace their scars constantly, a, a lot of people like their scars, and that's cool, that's cool, whatever, but everybody's different, and I would prefer if my scars weren't constantly able to be seen in public, especially because I have a small child, and I live in an area where it could be dangerous if I was constantly out, and that's why I shut my mouth when I'm in public a lot of the time, okay, but, um, yeah, so I do like that, you know, because I, and sometimes I do, like, I appreciate my scars because of what I've gone through, and I'm, I don't know how to word it. I don't, to me, I don't think proud is the right term, because I'm not, I'm going to be real, I'm not proud of being transgender, because I don't think, I mean, I think the struggles that a lot, a lot of us have to overcome, that those are things to be prideful about, but I don't really think there's pride in just being trans or gay or anything. Like, I'm, I'm not homophobic, I'm married to a dude, guys. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't think innately those things are anything to be proud of, in my opinion. Um, I know. Oh, my God. Now, I'm, I'm going to, I just, I try to do videos, and I always know I'm going to start a fight. Even when I, I'm like, no, I got to reword it. But I'm not restarting this. I'm not. I got to go back to work in a second. So, um, anyways, yeah, I do like that. Like, if I lay down, this scar is a little bit more, uh, jacked up because, uh, I had, like, a keloid or something. This one's pretty, uh, clean. But, um, I do like that normally it just looks like the curvature. One time I did a video on how, like, you know, it kind of just, you know, my scars kind of blend in with my chest and some trans guy got so mad, he's like, except you can see them. He was, like, so offended. Not trying to offend you other trans mask dudes, man. I think everybody's surgery is great. I think anyone who has the opportunity to do something that makes them happy is great. So shut up and be happy to me, too. Not you, commenter. I think you're great. Have a good day. <laughs> Hi, sure, I have to do my spiel first. Uh, hi, my name is MJ. Um, I have had top surgery. I'm a trans male. Um, I chose to leave fat because I am fat. I felt like it looked more natural. Uh, okay, so um, a lot of people look at my number tattoos and they always ask if they're gang related, which is so funny because no. <laughs> um, but uh, they're actually, they have kind of, well, to me, they're significant, but to everybody else, they'd, they'd be kind of boring, have boring meanings. Uh, 603, I'm from New Hampshire. Um, people are usually surprised to hear me say that because not a lot of people are from New Hampshire. Uh, 2013, that's when my son was born, 1990. Um, that is, you know, when I was born, 353. That's Ireland's country code. My family um, is Irish. I'm third generation. Um, what else? Uh, 415, Hey Dashbury District. My dad loves um, San Francisco, so I got that for him. Let's see, do I have anything else? Any other numbers? Oh, 978. Um, my family is from Essex County in Mass. Um, I'm from New Hampshire, but my whole family's from there, so I kind of got it from my dad and my family and stuff. Um, so yeah, I think that's all the numbers on me. I think. Oh, 26, that's when I started to transition. Um, I'm 31 now, so. 31 and a half! Okay, but no, I'm 31. So, um, I think that's all the, uh, numbers I have on me. 
I think. So yeah, thank you for your question, and I hope you have an awesome day. <laughs> Hi everybody, for those who are new here, my name is MJ, um, I've had top surgery, I chose to leave fats because I am fat, I felt like it was more natural, and um, I try to talk about my surgery because I know it's kind of unconventional and we need more awareness. Okay, um, sorry about my spiel. So, um, yeah, so I want to preface by saying like I'm not body shaming, obviously, like I'm, <laughs> I'm fat as hell or whatever, but um, no, but this is true. Um, there is kind of a body type in the trans mass community um, of... Uh, you know, people that are either very slender or people that are jacked, um, and there's not a lot of representation for those who are in between. Um, you know, I feel a kinship with anybody almost who's like a trans man, you know what I mean? Like, I'll always have a connection with them no matter what body type they are. Um, but it is true that fat trans men need more representation. We have Chaz Bono, but he, you know, is private, which rightfully so. Um, so we don't have a lot of representation. And it's funny because when a lot of people make comments about how I chose not to have a flat chest, they're like, you know, in their eyes, they're like, why would you choose to leave any fat? But really, it's not just like, it, I mean, the main goal is to pass in public, but also like before I had surgery, um, I have to be careful what I say because of TikTok, but um, before I had surgery, um, I was not rocking with like something that I could just cover with KT tape, okay? This was like good for other people that they can do that, but like I, that's not what I was working with. So like this is nothing compared to what I had before. This is perfect for me. Um, so yeah, I'll never, I think that that's part of the thing is like most people in the community are kind of like they have a certain body type and a flat chest might work with that body type. And um, that is why they look at me and they're like, oh my God, why would you choose to leave fat? Well, not only because it's more natural, but because, are you kidding me? This is nothing compared to what I had before. This is nothing. Um, and before anyone asks, no, I can't show pictures because even if I show censored pictures, TikTok takes it down. Um, but yes, um, I definitely think we need more representation in the community, which is why I do what I do. And thank you for your comment. Hi, thank you for your question. Um, so yeah, so obviously I'm covered in like horrible tattoos. I did them all myself. Um, do I regret any? Um, I really, I really don't. Like I used to regret my neck a lot when I first started transitioning because I felt like it outed me because how many cis dudes do you know with like king on their neck? Uh, so I felt like that kind of like uh, outed me a little bit and uh, impacted my passing. But as time went on, I you know, when I really started to consider covering it up, I decided against it because me and all my friends, we were kind of like, that's just like my signature thing is I have that neck tattoo. I've actually redone it, uh, yeah, redone it like uh, two or three times since then uh, to darken it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the only other thing like I might like mildly regret is uh, my knuckles and that's just because of what they say. They say stay woke and I think it's like, I don't know, it's kind of like cringe a little bit and I wish I didn't have it. Um, but um, I don't know, I do like that song, uh, Redbone, so when that came out, I was like, okay, okay, maybe I can live with them now. Um, but yeah, I actually really don't regret my tattoos. I know to a lot of people, um, they're real low grade and everything, um, that's okay. I did them all myself. Um, I had fun doing them. I wouldn't recommend it because it's not safe and they obviously don't come out as good. Um, but I mainly got most of my tattoos to, like, pass better in public as male, and, um, I 100% believe that if I had got covered in like professional tattoos, they would have looked better. They definitely would have looked better and more high quality, but I don't think they would have given off the vibe that I give off now. I don't think that. Uh, when people see me in public, they're usually like, they think that I was in prison or something, and they usually just assume that I'm a dude who was like a convicted felon. Um, and uh, which is funny, cause like I always say, like prison tattoos are actually like really, they're pretty high quality a lot of the time. Uh, this is not prison quality. Um, but that is the perception people have of me looking at me. So I really don't regret doing them myself and I'll probably keep doing them myself because um, I just, I feel like if, even if I was to like cover them with professional tattoos, I don't think it would match with what I was, the goal that I was trying to uh, achieve. Um, and not to say that trans men with professional tattoos pass less, absolutely not. But my specific look like, you know, um, I do feel these tattoos work with it and work with me on passing more. So I don't really regret any of them, really. Not really. Maybe I just wish it said something else, but yeah. This is almost my favorite tattoo now, and it's funny because I did regret it at one point, but now I can't picture myself without it. <laughs> 
Hi, thank you for your question. Um, so for those who are new here, my name is MJ. Um, I'm female to male. I, I had top surgery. I chose to leave fat because I'm a fat dude. I felt like it was more natural for me. Um, now that my spiel is over, um, so typically you want documentation of gender dysphoria. Um, traditionally, they want it from like two different um, professionals. Um, and that's so that insurance will cover the procedure and that the surgeon will get paid. Um, nowadays, they do have informed consent. Um, however, um, and I'm sure this isn't like, um, you know, across the board, but from what I've heard, um, with informed consent, a lot of times it's out of pocket, which it can get very costly. I mean, it can get upwards of like 10 grand. I mean, that's a lot of money. Um, so typically people get documentation about their journey of transitioning, living as you know, male or whatever, or, you know, I'm just speaking from my experience, like I'm female to male, so I had to show documentation. I had been living as male. I had been on hormones. I had been like, um, you know, diagnosed with gender dysphoria. At that point, it was like eight years or something. Um, you don't need that long usually. Um, but you need this documentation really, um, I'm assuming for liability issues on the surgeon's end. Um, and also, it's also because, you know, they need to get paid. <laughs> um, so um, insurance um, is more apt to cover it if you have the proper documentation. I do know some insurances, like, absolutely, without any question, require two letters. Um, mine did not. I had to get documentation. Um, I really had, like, four letters. But um, they didn't say, like, you absolutely need two letters. It was just, like, you needed the appropriate documentation. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why you need it. Um, I won't go into the whole like informed consent versus whatever because it's such a controversial topic. Um, but um, it's basically so that no liability issues are faced and so uh, people get their money. <laughs> Hi, thank you for your question. Um, so yeah, my tattoos are really awful to be honest. I did them all myself. Uh, when I wanted to pass more, I just went out and I bought a tattoo gun. Uh, started tattooing all over. Zero out of ten, not recommended, not safe, but do I regret it? Hell no. Okay, so my favorite one, um, I would say, oh, and I have to put a disclaimer, I've had top surgery. I chose to leave fat because I'm fat. Okay, so not to you, but to everybody watching. It'll be a big fucking thing. So, um, my favorite tattoo, let's see. You know what? I'm going to go with my lake one. I'm going to go with my lake one. It's a rose. It says, all I know is how to survive. Um, I got it for my father when he had cancer because that's all he, he would always say that all I know is how to survive. All I know is how to survive. So, um, that's what I got from my father during that hard time. Um, and he beat cancer or I don't know if you're supposed to say it like that. He recovered from cancer. He's cancer free. Okay, knock on wood. Okay, um, but yeah, so uh, that I got that done when I was, that one I didn't do myself. Um, I got that done, how old was I? Oh my God, I was like, that was like 10 years ago. Oh my God, wow. It was, actually I think it's like 11 years ago, that's crazy. Um, other favorite ones, let's see. I guess uh, Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die. Uh, Hunter S. Thompson, Fear and Loathing. What else? Um, I love my hand tattoos, uh, or this one, uh, and I know it's not even good, but I just love how everything blended together. I just love it. I just love it. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, that's the 411 on that. Watch out. Hi, thank you for your question, and uh, for those who are new, uh, my name is MJ. I've had top surgery. I chose to leave fat because... I'm a bigger dude. I felt it looked more natural. Um, so actually, it was a little bit of a wait for me to get top surgery. Um, so I remember leaving my first consult very kind of feeling defeated a little bit. Um, so I went to my first consult with this surgeon, and I chose this surgeon on, um, you know, one of those um, trans websites or whatever. With um, it was supposed to list uh, trans like surgeon or surgeons that had you know experience on trans surgeries and everything. Um, I was very disappointed. Um, they could only provide me with one picture of uh, another trans guy they did um, surgery on. And um, they weren't like super, I don't know. They were just kind of in a way I felt degrading. Um, I had a letter at the time that had stated I had been in therapy for gender dysphoria for over 10 years. At the time it might have been like 8 years. Um, and that wasn't enough for them. Um, and they told me, and I quote, you will not, you will not find another surgeon that is going to do this surgery on you unless you get more documentation, like another letter. Um, I tried, I had already, I got like, um, a referral letter. I got a clearance letter from my, 
uh, doctor, I got a letter from my hormone provider and plus the letter from my therapist and my med doctor, it never was enough for them. Um, so I felt really defeated, but then I had another appointment with a surgeon that I sought out. He had um, specialized in reconstructing the chest after patients um, had had mastectomies. Um, and so I went to him and he actually had more experience than the guy that was listed on the trans site. Like my surgeon, I was his, I think, 12th uh, trans surgery. And the surgeon that assisted was, um, he had just worked um, you know, on doing bottom surgeries and stuff. So he had a lot of experience with the trans community. Um, and he was very, he was much more accepting. He saw my documentation. He was like, oh my gosh, you've gone above and beyond. This is, this is fine. <laughs> um, he was very understanding and he was very adamant on, I am going to make sure insurance works with you. Um, even when I had gone to him, when I had to go off T and I was nervous about regrowth, you know, and stuff like that, he was like, you know, if you ever need revisions, don't worry about it. We're going to make sure it's covered. He was very understanding. So yeah, after my first consult, I was a little defeated. It took a little bit, but I kept pressing forward. So my advice is if a surgeon doesn't sit well with you or you feel they're trying to gatekeep in any way, go to another consultation. It's worth it. All right, you guys. So I have kind of a funny story um, in regards to me, like having non-traditional top surgery and how uh, it's just so not recognized in our community or outside of it, I should say, too. Um, so <laughs> uh, basically, there was like this group of people who like, you know, obviously um, when I share my journey and everything like, you know, um, there's going to be people who don't like you. There's going to be people who are transphobic, who are going to talk about you no matter what that's fine um but um <laughs> you know the goal of my surgery was to look like you know an average fat guy and i guess i completed it because one time um there were this group of people and um i i guess you know they didn't like me or whatever and um so um they formed together to you know like harass me and stuff um this was a long time ago um but then they devised this like um notion that uh uh, because I look the way I do, I wasn't really a trans man because I have all these tattoos, because I left fat in my chest, it just looks like a fat guy chest and everything. They literally um, were trying to kind of like push the agenda that I was not a trans man, I was just posing as one. Um, and they thought that this would insult me and they I remember they left me a comment, something like, um, yeah, I'm convinced you're not really a trans man, you're just a fat dude with uh, man you know, I can't say that word because TikTok will shut me down. But, um, <laughs> but they thought that insulted me. It meant so much to me. It meant so much to me that they thought I was posing as a trans man. They thought I was a cis man. They thought I was a cis man who was doing this whole brigade to, uh, I guess, gain attention as a trans man or something. And that meant so much to me because I passed so well that this group of people literally thought, listen, it meant so much to me. Hold on. It meant so much to me that I framed it. This is just a still from a uh, video I did about it, like uh, about a year after it happened. But um, yeah, it meant so much to me. I framed the comment of them saying, this is just a fat cis guy posing as a trans guy. And I put it on my dresser so I could see it every morning when I woke up. Thank you so much, and this is why I'm so outspoken about it, because I feel like in the trans mass community, like, we're kind of a small demographic. I know it seems like there's a lot of us online, but really we're not that huge of a population, and so since there aren't a lot of us, um, there's honestly, even though it, there have been years of research, it's like, there hasn't been a lot, so like, we're not really offered or um, we don't know we're offered a lot of options. Um, when I went for top surgery, I was looking into it, I really thought I only had the option of getting a completely flat chest. Um, I did have like DI, so I had like the same idea as those who have like, you know, the flat chest with the scars, like that is what I got, but I didn't know I even had an option of like leaving fat um, until I really, you know, asked my surgeon. I said, you know, this is what I want, you know, and he was on board. Um, but I really think it's important for, uh, you know, and not to say that all trans men need to 
be outspoken about their surgery. You know, I know people are stealth and people have boundaries, that's fine. Um, but I wish there was more representation about different forms of top surgery. Um, because I think it would be less shocking when people speak out about it because the truth is like when I go to the beach I just blend in they just think I'm a fat guy and that was exactly my goal um, I only stand out in the trans male community because I'm telling them you know hey I had top surgery and they think well why didn't you get it flat you know what I mean so everywhere else I blend in except the trans mass community but it means so much to me because I get comments like this a lot I have people ask if they can like screenshot it for their surgeon and stuff like that um, and to know that that they didn't even know that that was an option um, and now they do and maybe it'll help them feel more comfortable because you know in no shade to anyone who wants a flat chest everybody has different goals different preferences that's fine but me personally I can't even picture being okay with a completely flat chest so um, to know that maybe I could help others feel comfortable post-op and like their results even more that really means a lot so thank you so much for your comment <laughs> Hi, so uh, let's skip to the basics first. We know you're not a nurse. You can't even form a correct sentence. You're not a nurse. Uh, but not only that, when I was speaking of spot reduction, that spot reduction in terms of weight loss is not what liposuction is. Not even close. Not even close, sweetheart. All right, so uh, let's get down to uh, my actual surgery. My surgeon completed my surgery, my surgeons, I should say, exactly how I wanted it. I drew out how I wanted my surgery and they completed it exactly how I wanted it. It's my chest. I am usually anywhere from 215 to 250 pounds. I have a huge gut. Most cis men with my builds have huge guts. Uh, so that was natural for me. My scars look really good. For my body type, this is perfect. Cis men who have my build of a huge stomach have fat in their chest. That's realistic, that's what I wanted, not to downplay anyone who didn't want that, but I got my goal. And when a surgeon completes exactly what you asked for with uh, really good scarring or minimal scarring, I should say. So um, next time you're at your fake job, I hope that you um, let them know that you don't even know proper terminology because that's really fucking scary if you're assisting in surgeries. <laughs> so sure so basically um a lot of people think that like my number tattoos are like they're like are you in a gang or some shit like that you know what i mean they think they have these like this super special mysterious meaning um to be honest i got a lot of my tattoos around the same time um i was just trying to pass more and it works it helps people think i'm like a convicted felon even though prison tattoos are way better than this um but okay so number tattoos that's when my son was born when I was born, Ireland's country code, um, I'm Irish, that's, I'm not from Ireland, but I just got it to represent my family, uh, 629, my marriage date, 603, I'm from New Hampshire, um, 26, when I started transitioning, 415, my dad loves the Haight-Ashbury district, um, do I have any other numbers, let's see, oh, two, um, that was supposed to say too deep, but then I had to pick my mom up from work. So I didn't finish it, um, and I don't think I will finish it because now there's a squirrel outside. It's so cute. Now, um, you know, it's me, my husband, and Roman. So now we're three deep, man. So I can't, I can't write that. Um, yeah. Oh, nine seven eight because my um, family is from the Lawrence area. I don't want to say like specific, specifically where, but um, and uh, yeah, I grew up in New Hampshire though, mostly, mostly. Um, so yeah. That's what all the number tattoos mean. Um, it's a lot more boring, I think, than people expect. <laughs> Have a good day. You guys, I'm in here filming a top surgery video, like a Q&A thing, and, I, and my husband's right there. I don't think he noticed me yet. Hold on. I love you. No. <laughs> Hi, so first of all, congratulations on losing 14 pounds. If that's, you know, your goal to stick with the surgeon and everything, that's totally cool. Everybody has different, you know, goals, preferences, everything. Um, however, in the trans mass community, there is a huge issue with uh, surgeons uh, gatekeeping fat dudes from getting top surgery. And um, 
I'm the type of person I like to like really follow facts and science and it is it is true it is true that um, when it comes to you know anesthesia everything there's a higher risk when you're overweight I can understand there's a higher risk of like infection with healing sometimes um, I totally get why some surgeons would like you know people to lose weight however I still do believe it's a form of gatekeeping and the reason is is because if you look at the risks of the fatalities associated with gender dysphoria it's it it, outweigh, it outweighs it, like, you know what I mean? Like, the risk is so high of um, fatalities in the trans community, you know, associated with dysphoria um, and just societal acceptance and stuff like that, that for a surgeon to be like, you know, I'm not going to operate on a fat person or somebody who's, you know, maybe overweight or whatever um, just because um, there's a heightened medical risk. Um, it's, I think they need to kind of really weigh the risks a little more. Um, I went to two consultations and I was bigger than I am now uh, when I had top surgery. Two consultations and uh, not one even mentioned my weight. Um, the first one wasn't going to allow me to have the chest I wanted like this. Like the first one I don't think would have let me leave fat. Um, they were big on they had their way and they wanted to do it their way. Um, the second console, he was like, oh yeah, he liked my idea. He, he was willing to do it for me. Um, he liked that I wanted like totally fat and create like a natural kind of look and everything he never mentioned my weight either um i was probably about 245 to 250 when i went to my consultations um and i do advise trans men like i understand like i'm not saying go against doctor's orders but really every doctor has a different recommendation um hold on i can't see my timer thing okay so i know every doctor has a different recommendation but if your dysphoria is at a debilitating point to the point where, um, cause for me it was like absolutely, it was horrible. Like I, I, I was like to the point where I felt sick to my stomach every morning just trying to get up and like face the day. It was horrible. Um, I would advise that people that are going through dysphoria like that find a new surgeon. Um, because honestly you don't really want a surgeon that doesn't have a lot of experience operating on bigger dudes if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna lose weight, whatever. But like, you know, for dudes that are bigger, I mean, you know, just be careful because some it's it's hard to find an experienced surgeon, and even t when they're experienced, usually it's not on fat guys, so it's rough. All right, so first, let's go through questions I commonly get asked about my top surgery. Um, question one: Why don't you have a flat chest? Um, so it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm a big dude. Um, I didn't want a flat chest because I feel like most men my uh, build, like my size. Um, typically don't have flat chests. Um, my main goal in surgery was to pass, to just blend in on the beach. Um, even though I am covered in tattoos, though surprisingly, they actually help me blend in as a cis man. Um, cause sometimes I don't pass otherwise. Um, and having a chest, I feel, that fits my body form in a lot of cis men. Um, I felt that that was a good idea because realistically, men who have like 50 inch guts like me usually don't have flat chests and, you know, that was just, you know, my personal decision. Another question I get asked is, um, if you lost weight, what would happen to your chest? Um, I mean, I don't know because spot reduction isn't real. Um, but in reality, if I was to lose weight, which I have lost weight a little bit before and it's gone down, so I'm imagining it would go down. Um, but I would hope it doesn't get like completely flat because honestly like my weight's been up and down for a lot of my life and um, when I have been thin I have a large amount of loose skin in my stomach so um, it would look fine. Oh the sun just shone on me. Okay, <laughs> but it would look uh, totally fine you know what I mean if I still had a little bit in my chest it would look natural still. Even though I chose to leave fat in my chest some people ask because I'm off testosterone am I worried about like uh, tissue regrowth? Uh, no I'm not. Um, I'm 31 years old um, so the odds of that are extremely low. Um, I'd actually have a higher chance of that happening if I was on testosterone because of gynecomastia. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with the amount of fat that was left. Um, and um, I'm not too concerned about anything growing back since I'm well above an age that that happens unless you're like pregnant or have like, you know, really intense hormonal fluctuations. Um, so it's gravy. <laughs> 
Another question I get asked a lot in regards to my top surgery is um, if I have any feeling at all. Uh, it depends on what area up here. I don't have feeling. Um, it varies from trans man to trans man. Some people, um, their nerves are fine. They have complete feeling. Others have partial, like me. Uh, some don't have any at all. Like it, it really depends from trans guy to trans guy. So yeah, I really hope my story helps others. Well, I know it has, you know, realize that there's different types of top surgery and you don't always have to stick to just one. Everything is okay. It's all right, man. <laughs> Life is good. Hi, thank you for your question. And um, I know this preface is annoying, but I have to say it because people literally just are completely unaware of top surgery results aside from uh, the norm, not you, just in general. So I'm a fat... Um, guy, a fat trans guy. I've had top surgery. I chose to leave fat because I am fat. I felt like it looked more natural. So in my last video, I talked about, um, you know, how a lot of people when I went off testosterone, which I've been off it for a long time, um, they asked me if I was scared of regrowth, like regrowth of tissue. Um, and surprisingly, I actually have had none. This is just, I chose to leave this amount of fat because I felt like it was proportionate. Um, However, the reason I said in the last video that that's not a concern of mine at all and I'd be more concerned about it if I was on T is because typically like tissue grows back if you have surges of estrogen. That's why like a lot of women experience it during pregnancy and stuff. I'm at an age where it's it, I don't get surges like that. Um, in fact, before I started T, before I even had hormones, I was already premenopausal, and this is at like 25. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm not super worried about it, but even if I wasn't, you know what I mean? Like, even um, cis women, um, at my age, I'm 31, I stopped T at about, what, 29 maybe? Um, yeah, even at that age, the odds of having any regrowth without, like, pregnancy and stuff, um, or, like, the assistance of HRT, um, is probably really low. Um, that's why a lot of times, like, you know, um, when women are post-mastectomy, um, a lot of times there's, like, reconstruction and stuff. Like, my surgeon, he actually specialized in, um, the reconstruction of chest, like, after mastectomies. And, um, that's part of why is because, um, in order to be at a certain age and to grow tissue back, you would usually need assistance. However, testosterone, um, I mean gynecomastia can happen. If your testosterone levels get too high, um, which if you have, you know, you have a doctor you trust that monitors your levels, it's no big deal, like obviously, whatever. Um, but if um, people aren't keeping an eye on your levels and your testosterone re reaches a level that's unhealthy, it can actually aromatize, which means it turns into estrogen. Then you can have tissue regrowth. Cis men experience it as well. Um, so that is you know that is that would be a concern if i were you know on tea in my opinion um it's funny because actually when i went off tea um i hadn't researched a lot about this so i was very scared i thought oh my god i'm gonna go off and immediately i'm gonna have a chest back um you know what i mean and it didn't um happen at all in fact i think it was like the first month my chest went down like two inches or something which for a chest where you only have a little bit of fat, that's a lot. Um, so yeah, if I was on testosterone, actually, it would be a bigger concern for me than now because I ain't getting no surges of estrogen anytime soon. <laughs> Hi, uh, thank you for your question. And uh, not towards you, but I have to say this. I am a trans man. I've had top surgery. I chose to leave fat because I'm fat. I got to say that with every video. It's obnoxious, okay? Um, but yeah, so a lot of people have been asking me about my tattoos. Uh, my tattoos are very shitty, actually. <laughs> Um, I literally, um, this was like towards the end of when I, like it's when, the end of when I was presenting as a masculine lesbian and when I started transitioning, um, I was getting so frustrated with not passing, um, that I literally got a tattoo gun, a 0 out of 10 not recommended, and I started tattooing myself all over. I'm glad I did. I still do it. Um, well, not during the pandemic, but... I usually do it, um, but like, um, like I said, I wouldn't recommend it because obviously, like, infection risk goes up. They don't come out as good, but it's kind of the look I was going for. Um, it's funny because when I like see people a lot of time in public, people assume that I've been in prison um, because of my tattoos, which is hilarious. Because if anyone's seen real prison tattoos, um, they are way better than this. But this, that's just the assumption people get, and at least they leave me alone. So worked for me. So about my tattoos, uh, 1990. I was born in 1990. 
353. I'm going to do my number tattoos because that's what people ask the most about. They think I'm like in like 13 gangs, I guess. Uh, 353, that is um, Ireland's country code. And then 2013 is when my son was born. I have 415 because my dad loves the Haight-Ashbury district. Um, 26, um, that's about the age I started transitioning. Um, oh, 629, that's my marriage date. 603, I'm from New Hampshire. I got a lot of New Hampshire followers lately. I'm so excited about it. Um, let me see. What else? Uh, Festa, that's my name. You know, that's been my name in the trans community for a long time because I'm fat, I'm bald, and, you know, I'm weird. Um, let's see. What else? I have a lot of women and, uh, you know, flowers on me. Um, I didn't do this myself. Um, I have Rome on one hand. I don't even want to say. I'm so embarrassed that this hand I got a long time ago. It says stay woke. Oh my god. Okay. Um, then I have La Vida C. Gay Life Goes On. Um, I have... What else? I have Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die. Um, I have this girl who turned out like a Simpson. Doesn't she look like a Simpson? Um, what else? I have one on my leg. This one I got from my father. This is one of my favorite ones. It says, uh, all I know is how to survive. He got it when he had, uh, cancer. I love, that's one of my favorite tattoos. Um, what else? I got two because this was going to stay too deep because of Roman and I. Um, but for one, I had to leave. I had to pick my mom up from work <laughs> so I couldn't finish it. And also because, uh, now we're three deep. We got, I got a husband now. So I got, I got to alter it somehow. Um, yeah. Someone thought this was a bulldog, which I think is absolutely hilarious. It is a pretty bad skull, but I did it with my left hand. Um, this hand is my favorite. It's all a bunch of shit. Hi, thank you for your question. And for those who are new, I am a trans man. I've had top surgery. I chose to leave fat because I'm fat. <laughs> I figured it would look more natural. Um, so, thank you for your question. And, uh, this is a, this is a good question because I, I feel like people don't talk about it post-op, like, how it can be awkward sometimes. Um, yeah, it took a tiny bit getting used to being shirtless in public. However, once I realized that nobody cares, <laughs> like, once I went to the beach and nobody even gave me a second glance, um, it became very freeing. It was more freeing than anything but there I did have um, you know anxiety about it and I think that's normal and I think some trans men are afraid to say that it's scary at first and they're nervous because um, it's such a freeing experience getting top surgery and um, trans men who have it it's almost treated like a privilege you know what I mean um, which in some ways I guess it is to have access to it but um, so it's like I think they don't want to sound like they're complaining or that they're taking it for granted but it is completely normal when your whole life you've lived, um, you know, needing to cover up certain body parts and then you're allowed to be free. Um, you know what I mean? Um, where I live, even women can go shirtless. In most states they can, but I don't know. I guess that's a different story. I get a lot of turfs. Um, but anyways, um, so yes, um, I would say, like, to be honest, the most awkward issue I had after top surgery was probably mostly being shirtless in front of uh, family or people I grew up with um, and it's more so just because I was nervous of how they take it how you know when you know when you've known someone your whole life like even you know for me if I look at my best friend and you know my family um, if I were to have to view them as a totally different gender that would be a little hard um, and so um, of course I was a little nervous like how they would receive it how it would go about and it did feel awkward um, sometimes it still feels a little awkward um, but um, you know obviously the freedom and the you know, happiness that comes from it overrides that. Um, but it did take some getting used to. It did, definitely. Um, and I think people should talk about it more that it's okay after you've had surgery that, you know, you get nervous about not passing, about like, you know, what if someone stares at you? What if they know? What if, you know, that's, it's normal to feel a little awkward and it's totally normal. <laughs> Hi, so this is a good question, and just as a preface for those who are new, I'm a trans man, I've had top surgery, I decided to leave fat because I'm fat. I felt like it looked more natural. Okay, now that my little uh, spiel is over, um, this is actually a good question. Um, I usually don't talk about this question because um, my videos get reported and shit, but who fucking cares? Who cares? What is TikTok going to do? Kick me out of the fucking creator fund. I won't make $2 a day. Boo-hoo. Okay, so on to it. Um, my chest, yes, I do have sensation. Now, I can only speak for my experience. It varies from 
person to person, you know what I mean? Um, I can't even say the proper name of what I got. Um, I have to disguise it a little bit. So I got a double uh, incision with, we'll just say, Whipple grafts. That's what we're gonna say. Okay, so um, it varies from person to person. Uh, some trans men completely lose sensation forever. Some get it back. Uh, some are in between like me. Um, so in some areas I don't have sensation like up here. I can't really feel anything. Um, yeah, so uh, but I do have feeling elsewhere, but it's not the same um, as you know when I was pre-op. Um, to me, it was still worth it. Like that wasn't a huge issue to me like I didn't really you know care if it felt different or I lost feeling um I you know top surgery was really important to me so that wasn't really a determining factor but for some men it is um and that's okay um but for me um I it doesn't I don't I don't like it like I'm not I don't like when people touch my chest it doesn't feel it just feels awkward I don't like it um uh, definitely doesn't feel the same um but um, I, I do think this is a good question because I get asked by like other trans men, like are they gonna lose feeling? Obviously I can't predict that. Um, but um, I believe and I hope I'm, I, I don't know, I'm not a doctor obviously. I'm not a doctor. Okay, but um, I'm pretty sure most people get it back. I'm pretty sure. I don't know, don't quote me on that. Um, so yeah, but to me, even though I go out feeling back, it's not the same as before and I'm not, um, you know, I don't like it, but I love my chest. Hi, thank you for your question. Um, for those new here, um, I'm a trans man. I chose to leave fat because I'm fat. I felt it looked more natural. Um, and usually, so this is a very good question, and normally I don't address it um, because I am always nervous because my videos get reported. I'm like, oh my God, but what is TikTok going to do? They're going to take me out of the creator fund. I won't make $2 an hour. Not even $2 a fucking day. Oh, cry me a river, tough shit. So I'm going to answer this question. It's a good question. So this varies uh, differently from trans man to trans man. Um, I can't speak on other top surgeries like trans women. I can only speak on what I had done. It's a double incision mastectomy. Well, double incision um, with... <sighs> I still can't say this word. I know if I say this word, they're gonna fucking they're gonna flag it. But let's just say it rhymes with Whipple. Okay, I got double incision with Whipple grafts. That's what I got. Okay, um, and it varies, like you know, on like sensation if people still have it. Uh, for me, I do have. Um, I don't have feeling all through here. Like I, it's not all the way up here. I don't have feeling. I do have um, sensation in a lot of. And most of it, um, but it's not the same as before, and I don't like it. Um, so I'm just being real with that. I don't like it. I don't like when people touch my chest. <laughs> I don't like it. Um, so yeah, um, it's not the same as before. To me, that wasn't a huge deal. Um, some people, that's a huge deal. They don't, they don't want to risk losing that. Um, to me, I could have, you know, I, I didn't really care less. Having my chest was more important to me having the top surgery than um keeping that but it varies some trans men get all of it back some get none some are in between like me um but yeah i do have feeling but it's not it's not the same and i don't like it i just feel kind of awkward i don't i don't like it it doesn't i don't know i don't really like it <laughs> um so yeah that's that's the two cents on that mjl hi thank you for Okay, so I've told this story before, um, but I've gotten a lot more followers since then, so I gotta tell it again. Um, so for those who uh, are new, you know, um, I'm a trans man, I've had top surgery, I chose to leave fat because, you know, I'm fat, okay? So now that the spiel is over. Um, so when I had top surgery, or right after I did anyways, um, I had to go to the ER because I had a fever. Um, and so I went in and there were like no seats there, right? There was no seats for me to sit down and like I had just had top surgery So it was like it was just hard to kind of move in general Um, and so I go up to like the triage person and I asked him I was like, hey, do you have any seats so I can sit down? I just had a mastectomy. I had to say mastectomy because as I said in my last video people outside of like really trans friendly doctors do not know what top surgery is so he's like oh right away sir right away and i was like thoroughly impressed because a not only was he so kind and going to get me a seat but two he was gendering me correctly after i just told him i had a mastectomy 
um, I was very impressed. And um, so he was really nice. He gets me the seat. I sit down and he starts doing my intake and everything. And he goes, okay, sir. So how long has it been since you had a vasectomy? <sighs> Man. Hi, so a lot of people will actually see this and think like, oh, that's such an obvious like question though. Uh, but it's not, it's not. That's a good question because, um, you know, whenever I go out like, mostly in like medical situations like when I have to explain like surgeries I've had uh, people do not know what top surgery is um, the technical name for what I got was double incision with I can't say the word but graphs um, and they don't even know what that is half the time um, and I thought it was just like my location um, but it's not because I had surgery outside of uh, Boston nobody there that's a very progressive town pretty much um, as far as like you know like being trans, LGBT and stuff, like much more progressive than where I'm from. And uh, yeah, nobody knew what it, where, what it was except, you know, obviously, you know, my surgeon, the hospital, whatever. Uh, even parts of the hospital didn't know. <laughs> um, and uh, so I think it's a good question. Um, so I'm just uh, speaking from the trans mask point of view because, um, you know, that's what I had. Um, but top surgery um, is typically when you either um, reduce the tissue in your chest, you have male contouring done um, so that you can, not just so that you can go shirtless, but to so that your chest appears more masked. Masculine. Um, in the trans femme world, that can mean like, you know, um, an augmentation. Um, I have to be very careful what I say on this. Um, but yeah, actually, when I'm in a lot of medical situations, I have no choice but to say I had a mastectomy, which I don't like because there's been times when I say I had a double mastectomy and then they see that I'm bald and they assume that like I have cancer or something. I don't like that, but I have no option because nobody knows what top surgery is. Nobody knows. Um, I could say I had gender conforming surgery, but they're gonna assume I meant bottom surgery. So, um, asking what top surgery is, that's a good topic of conversation because a lot of people don't know what it is still in 2021. A lot, I would say most medical staff I run into do not know what it is. Um, so I think that's a good question. So thank you for your question. <laughs> Hi, thank you for your question. And for those new, um, I'm a trans man. I've had top surgery. I chose to leave fat because I'm a fat dude and I felt like it kind of looked more natural to leave fat in my chest. Um, and so regarding your question, like, um, obviously I'm not a medical professional or anything, um, but I did go to like two different consults in regards to like my top surgery. So I do have experience. Um, I'm not trying... <laughs> I, the way I said it, it sounded like I was trying to compare myself to doctors. That's not what I meant. I meant to say, like, I do have experience, like, as a bigger trans guy going to, like, different surgeons and, like, kind of feeling them out and everything. Um, so it's hard to, like, ex I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, I respect that a lot of surgeons require certain BMIs because I understand that there is a risk with anesthesia and everything and even the healing process like if you're bigger or whatever um, there might be increased risks um, however in my opinion um, you know if I went to a consult and they were like you know I'm not gonna work on bigger guys I would have found somebody else um, because I feel like some people don't understand um, how dire uh, you know gender assignment or reassignment surgery is and that includes top surgery for me like I needed it like I was at the point where if I didn't get it like because my quality of life was just really not good um so um if i had have had a surgeon say to me like you know um there's too many risks we're not going to do it at this weight i would have found another one because the risk of me not getting it in my opinion was worse um there are a lot of skilled surgeons who not only have experience with bigger trans men but they have like you know or i meant to say like medically but they also have um experience you know like uh contouring a certain way and just making it um you know look um natural and everything like mine was a uh he was actually a um surgeon that specialized in like uh reconstruction after um cancer surgeries uh in women um but he had like some experience with trans men as well um and i chose him because i i thought he could give me results like this that looked more natural um in my opinion i would stay away from surgeons who don't have a lot of experience with bigger trans men um that would make me nervous um because i i I don't know it would make me nervous um 
I would definitely, um, I wouldn't just go by those trans websites that like recommend you people because the first surgeon I went to was highly recommended on transgender or trans men sites for like uh, top surgery. He wouldn't even accept um, my therapy letter that said I had been in uh, therapy for gender dysphoria. For, it was like over a decade um, and he wouldn't accept that. He wanted more <laughs> so um, I would go with your gut and just look around ask have you had done surgeries on bigger trans men or trans men in general um, do your own research don't just go by like what everybody recommends that's my my uh, I don't know two cents <laughs> thank you so as I always say for context um, I'm a trans man I chose to leave fat with top surgery because I'm a bigger dude I felt like it was more natural for me. Um, one thing I find interesting, I mean, of course, once in a while I get hate from trans men, you know, because they expect me to have, like, a completely flat chest, um, which I don't understand why they expect that. Um, but one thing that's interesting is when my videos like this go viral, um, a lot of the hate comes from cis men who are just ragging on me um, because I have, like, fat in my chest because... Um, you know, even cis men get ragged on for stuff like that. Um, and it's very interesting because I didn't grow up as a little boy. Um, even if I feel like I, you know, my brain is male, I didn't grow up with the same um, expectations um, that society puts on, you know, boys and, you know, young men or whatever. Um, whether or not you feel that those are, you know, less hard or more hard, whatever, they're different. Um, and I didn't grow up with that. So I never, like, you know, um, felt like, you know, I didn't get it drilled into me that having, like, you know, insane packs and, like, looking slim and everything was, like, I didn't have that drilled into me. Um, so this is my ideal. Like, I love this. I love how I look. Like, I wanted my chest like this. Um, I, all I wanted was to blend in as a fat dude, and I do. Um, and it's just, a, it really puts it in perspective that, like, the thing that you're most insecure about, because there are tons of cis men that have reached out to me that are overweight, that are insecure about their chest or whatever, and this is what my freedom is. <laughs> like, this is what makes me happy, and it's just interesting how that perspective, like, it's so different, like, what really, you know, what you feel brings you down and what's a perceived flaw to you, uh, someone else might find it the best thing ever, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just really interesting to me. Um, so yeah, like, I, I don't know. Um, it's funny because like when people make comments like that, they don't understand that like, that's what I wanted. Like, I know I look like a fucking fat dude with like a fat chest. I, I don't know if I can say the man word, you know, I don't know if I can say that. Um, but that's my ideal. I'm very happy with that. Um, even if it's not the ideal for you because you know, society pushed a stigma or whatever. This is my ideal. Um, but I appreciate that. I don't know those struggles that, you know, growing up as male and, you know, having certain standards and getting ragged on for certain things. Like, I was a little girl, so I didn't experience that. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, but uh, just know that if you feel insecure about your body, about your chest or whatever, like, there's people like me where that is literally their ideal. And, um, I get reached out to every day about how inspiring it is to share my story, so, I don't know, keep your head up. <laughs> Hi, thank you for your question, and I know I always say this, but as a preface, I am a trans man who um, decided to leave fat in my chest with top surgery because I'm a bigger dude. Um, okay, so as far as pre-op, um, yes, I did have, well, in my opinion, I had a large chest. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to get on detail into detail like on TikTok, so I'm gonna avoid that. Um, but I did. Um, I do remember um, getting really frustrated pre-op um, because I would see like, and I and I'm not body shaming because I'm saying like in our community, this is actually looked towards look to as the ideal like you know real um smaller chest like slender bodies androgynous looks like in our community that's like really looked to as like something to idolize um and i would see a lot of trans men who were smaller than me with their chest and their overall bodies and they would be able to like go out with only putting like band-aids on or maybe like they could put like um kt tape now let me tell you something i went out and i bought myself some kt uh tape uh pre-op okay it cut a whole roll a whole roll of this knee tape a whole roll covered one okay one 
<laughs> I remember getting frustrated at that because I would see like you know they could do almost nothing and uh, you know be able to take like shirtless pictures be able to go to the beach like that was never possible for me and that was frustrating uh, so it, my chest was big enough for those things to really get to me um, also surprisingly I was gonna do a video on this but um, I didn't bind like pre-op really I mean I did a couple times like I tried it um, it wasn't for me I have extreme anxiety I was so claustrophobic I couldn't do it um, that's why I still mostly wear black because that's just what my wardrobe was back then um, I would mainly wear like black wife beaters black tees like um, anything to disguise my chest um, you know uh, it just you know I just I couldn't I couldn't bind um, and as somebody you know back then who had a bigger chest um, that was not very common in my um, you know experience <laughs> people didn't not bind a lot uh, most trans men I know binded and so it did feel a little out of place but um yeah uh, it's I don't know to me like leaving the fat like even though I still have a chest like it doesn't in my personal opinion it doesn't make me dysphoric because um typically when they do top surgery they masculinize your chest like when my chest was bigger before it did not look like this like it was completely different like this is like uh they bring stuff up they lessen stuff and then they lipo stuff so <laughs> it's the it's I don't know I love my chest but yes, I would say I did have a bigger chest. I don't know. I guess it's all opinion. Hi, thank you for your question. So as a preface, I feel like I always got to say this beforehand since my surgery results are not uh, often sought after in the trans community yet. Because I got a lot of people that reach out to me and uh, they're happy that like you know I'm speaking out about it because it's different. But I am a trans man. I've had top surgery. I chose to leave fat because I am fat. Felt like it looked more natural. So... As far as surgery costs, I was very lucky um, because um, I think my surgery was going to be, I want to say eight grand, but I'm afraid I'm getting it wrong. I think it was eight grand. Um, and so the first time I got a bill, um, I went to, um, you know, pay it or whatever. And um, they, I think it was like they refunded the money. I made like a payment and they refunded the money. And the hospital wrote off my entire surgery. Um, I don't know if it was just, I don't know. The, the hospital I went to, I just want to speak uh, very highly of them real quick. Um, you know, I don't have any ties to them aside from like, you know, they're just a preferred hospital with my family. But, um, you know, um, they wrote off my surgery and also my father um, had cancer and he had um, his surgery for like cancer related surgery at this place and they also wrote off his surgery. Um, I don't know what the basis was because I, I never like they didn't know my income. They didn't know anything. So it's not like they wrote it off. Um, I don't know. I don't know why they wrote it off, but it was very nice. Maybe because they hadn't had a lot of experience. Um, I, you know, um, I think my surgeon had maybe done like maybe six trans men. I don't know, but he was mainly a, um, he did like reconstruction for women who had uh, breast cancer. And um, I, I'm really glad I chose him because the first guy I went with was a top surgeon that was like super recommended by like you know trans sites and stuff the dude had worked on like one trans man and he w he was just it was awful so uh the second one um he was just awesome he was really understanding he worked with me like with what i wanted and i was just ecstatic with him and then i didn't have to pay anything uh so that was amazing um and uh yeah my advice would be to um you know just to be prepared and to get in for insurance to cover it like look at a policy beforehand that does cover a lot of trans health and um also uh what i did is i got um a letter from my therapist um that was also signed by my psychiatrist i also got a referral from my doctor i also got a letter from my doctor like my primary care um i got a letter from my hormone provider um and i think that's it Oh, and a letter of clearance. Your doctor can write a letter of clearance. Those are all things that can help you get approved for insurance so you don't have to pay, like, you know, a huge lump sum. Uh, and if you uh, get approved care credit, but I wasn't going to get approved for that. <laughs> Um, so for those who are new, um, I'm a trans man, I've had top surgery, I chose to leave fat because I'm a bigger dude, I felt like it looked more natural. Um, as far as like uh, going shirtless for the first time and stuff, yes, 
um, it took a lot to get used to for me anyways, but mostly because of fear. Um, I obviously felt like a huge sense of freedom and I was so excited. Uh, but when it came to like, um, you know, going to public places like the beach and stuff like that, um, I was scared. And actually the first time that I went to the beach um, with my family, um, well, it was the first time in general I had been to the beach, you know, post-op. Um, and I uh, went off on my own. I made, like I told my family beforehand, listen, I'm going to go off on my own at first um, because I was afraid, you know, if anything happened to me, I didn't want to carry it on to them. Um, so, yeah, and nobody cared. <laughs> nobody cared. Uh, my first time I was shirtless uh, in public, nobody cared. Um, I specifically remember, like, one dude um, kind of looking at me a little strange, but I don't think it was because of my top surgery or that he knew I was trans. Um, uh, he was a bigger guy like me, and um, I, we were both in the water, and, you know, I was shirtless, and um, he had a t-shirt on, and I got the vibe that he was looking at me because he couldn't believe that I'm a fat dude with, like, you know, um, a, you know, fat in my chest, and, like, I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to say man. You know, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, um, but, um, you know, I got the feeling that he was just, like, surprised that I didn't care and that I was just out shirtless, like, as a fat dude, um, and not caring, <laughs> um, and I think that's because, you know, like, I, cis men grew up with different standards than me, I grew up as a little girl, so I didn't grow up with, like, uh, you know, the same critique and stuff like that, um, that they did, so to me, this, I love my body, like, this is what I wanted, this is what I asked for, this is what I went through pain and recovery for, um, to have a chest like this, just so I can blend in as another fat dude, that means the world to me, um, when I know other, you know, men, like cis men, um, there's a bunny in my yard I keep looking at, uh, but cis men, um, you know, they grew up with different ideals and stuff, and things that society portrayed onto them, where maybe they don't feel as comfortable in their bodies, um, because I know this isn't the ideal for most cis men, so, um, I don't know, I think that's why he was looking at me, that's the only strange look I got. In front of my family, at first it was a little weird, it felt a little weird being shirtless, um, but nobody cares, nobody cared at all. Um, I can't speak for everybody, but in my case, nobody cared. <laughs> Hope you have a good day. Hi, thank you so much. Um, so actually I did most of my tattoos um, when I was a masculine lesbian. Um, I was right about to transition. It was like right before I started medically transitioning. And um, I was just so sick of not passing in public and getting hassled that I went out and I got a tattoo gun and I tattooed pretty much my entire body like uh anything to help me pass um obviously i don't recommend it because it's you know it's risky it's dangerous and they don't come out as good obviously but um i i i can't say i have any regrets um it definitely does the job it helps me pass people leave me alone um but that is when i got the majority i still do tattoo myself not during covid because i don't want to risk having to go to the hospital um but yeah so um that's kind of, some of them don't have a lot of meaning. Um, I really just kind of wanted to make sure that uh, when I go throughout my everyday life, uh, people leave me alone more and it works. Uh, people stay the fuck away from me. But I will explain some of my favorites to you. So one second. All right, so this is a tattoo I got uh, before I transitioned. I got it when my father had cancer. Um, it says, all I know is how to survive. Um, and that's something he used to say to me when he was really struggling. I also got this 415 because my dad, um, he loves San Francisco. Um, so I got that on me. Um, I got Festa because that's what I'm known as in the trans community. Um, I got too weird to live, too rare to die. Um, because I really related to that quote in that movie. Uh, before I transitioned because I felt like I didn't fit in. 629 is my marriage date. Um, and then this I got when I was, uh, you know, a girl before I transitioned. I cannot believe a lot of women have rib tattoos. Holy fuck, those things hurt. They're troopers, man. Um, that one was professional, and so was my uh, Hunter S. Thompson one. 26, that's when I transitioned. Um, let me see what else. Uh, I'm looking, <laughs> 353, Ireland's country code, country code, I should say, uh, I'm Irish, 2013, that's when uh, Roman was born. Alright, so I just wanted to build off of uh, the point I was making in my other video, um, so, and I'm referencing the fact that I chose to leave fat with top surgery because I'm a big dude, I felt like it helped me pass more, and it does. 
Um, not everybody in this world wants to automatically be like, you know, outed as a trans guy. Not everybody wants that. And if you do want that, that's okay. It's okay to want a flat chest. It's okay to want scars and love your scars. Because I think a lot of trans men that do have flat chests and scars look amazing, okay? Everybody has different goals and preferences. However, not everybody wants to immediately be outed as trans. Now, you might think that's weird because I have a public platform. Um, I get recognized in public. People know right away, oh, that's that trans dude from TikTok with the ducks. <laughs> like, they know. Um, but I didn't really have a choice. Um, as a parent, um, I didn't really have an option to be stealth. And because of that, I decided to share my journey to help others, which I have. And it feels awesome. It's very fulfilling. And I'm like out in public with my son and stuff in a situation where I am shirtless. I don't want people to be able to immediately out me. Um, I know they might from my TikToks, but uh, I've never had that in a situation like that happen yet. Um, but, um, you know, not everybody wants that, and that's okay. Not everybody wants to fly, like, trans pride flags. Not everybody, like, I've never even been to a pride event, and I have zero interest in it ever. Uh, you know, not every trans guy is the same. They're just not. Um, I am open about my journey because I know I help a lot of others, but that's it. <laughs> like, that's, that's, uh, like, full stop. That's it. That's the only reason I do it. Um, I don't, uh, think, in my opinion, I don't particularly like, you know, that, uh, I don't always pass. Um, I don't like that, um, or putting myself in a situation where I know I won't pass. I don't like situations where I'm outed. Um, I do what I do because I don't really feel like I had a whole lot of choice of not being open about my journey. I didn't really have an option of being stealth, um, you know, and, um, luckily I found a fulfilling purpose in it, but not everybody wants to be recognized as trans instantly like you do, and that's okay. That doesn't make them less trans or less valid. Shut up.